I want to welcome you to tonight's virtual open house. I'm really happy to have you here. Our agenda uh, is a brief one, but there's a lot to share. Uh, first of all, an introduction to the iSchool and the program, an overview of the program itself, uh, a little bit about what it's like to be an online student. And I can tell you that from my own uh, personal experience, uh, my doctor, uh, was all online. So I'm also uh, was an online student. So I, I know what uh, works and what doesn't. Not that uh, uh, I'm always as successful as you would like me to be, but uh, I have an idea of what I don't like as a student online. And then uh, we'll have a little Q&A. So uh, we have some big news here. I'm the one at the top, uh, Dr. Pat Franks, just call me Pat. And uh, I am a professor, but also the MARA program coordinator. Uh, below me is Dr. Sandra Hirsch, and I'm just saying here she's our outgoing director. She just on the left hand or right hand side, I guess, of the screen you see, uh, has been promoted to Associate Dean for Academics in the College of Professional and Global Education. That's the college we're in. So uh, Dr. Hirsch uh, is uh, going to be doing uh, her job as Associate Dean as well as trying to help us through the transition when we identify a new uh, uh, director for our program. And Dr. Linda Main, right below her, uh, is the interim director, but she was our, and is still our associate director. She's been here through two uh, directors now, and uh, she does not want to apply herself, but she wants to help with the transition. So she's going to make sure that we have a terrific search committee going and find the best possible replacement for Dr. Hirsch that we can. And then at the bottom, Sheila Gertrude, she is uh, just phenomenal. She's in our iSchool office, uh, and she is the administrative advisor so from your program, if you're in the MARA program, I would be your academic advisor, help you with course selection. Sheila would be your administrative advisor, uh, being able to answer questions about, well, what if I want to take an elective? How can I get a permission number? Those types of things. And then our primary faculty, uh, unfortunately, they can't be with us. Uh, up at the right hand uh, side, or I guess the left hand side, the top there, Dr. Lisa Dalby uh, teaches a number of courses in our program, and you will love her when you get to meet her. She's fantastic. And her real loves are information governance, information assurance, privacy, all of those types of things. She's in Canada, and she can't be with us tonight because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to someone, uh, her parents are uh, doing self-quarantine and she's over there getting them supplies this evening so they could be set up to survive uh, for that period of time. So she's in Toronto. Uh, Jason Kaltenbacher uh, teaches one course each fall and spring for us. Uh, and uh, there are basic courses. He's another fantastic person who is also program coordinator for a new informatics program that we have. And then Joshua Zimmerman is uh, the person who teaches our research methods course, uh, and he also teaches a, a shorter course for archives on uh, professionalism, uh, and he is a working archivist, so uh, he is employed, employed full-time elsewhere, uh, as is Lisa, as a matter of fact. Uh, Kenna is a student that should have been here today, but uh, she very uh, just recently sent me a note, uh, not being able to explain much, just saying, sorry, I can't be there. So uh, you will miss out on her tonight, but she's fantastic. And if you have questions about what it's like to be a student in the program and don't want me to see the reply, you send an email right to Kenna and she will get right back to you. Uh, she loves to talk about the program. She's our student assistant. She handles the blog. She handles handles the Facebook page, does a lot of um, uh, interviews with alumni and with current students. So she really has a handle on uh, the MARA program if, from a different perspective. Uh, and uh, you see a little note from her there uh, about the assistance that she believes that she's received during the program. Uh, and uh, she's going to be graduating soon and I'm going to be sorry to see her go, but uh, not, uh, not sorry for her. I think she'll be with us until December. Uh, so, uh, this, I am not Lisa, I'm Pat, but Lisa can't be here, so I'm going to talk to you about the Master of Archives and Records Administration program uh, and explain how it was put together. First of all, uh, 
the MLS program is different. You're going to want to compare the two. The MLS program does have an archives and records management pathway, they call it, uh, and you would have an MLIS degree that is ALA accredited, American Library Association accredited, all right? The MAR program is not because we don't want it to be, because to be accredited by ALA, you need library courses. That's a library association. Uh, this grew out of that other program where there were students who said, but I really want more time uh, to spend on archives, records management, and related courses. So this is our new, uh, uh, fairly new program. Uh, 2008, it was launched. Uh, and in order to create it, we looked at the ARMA core competencies for records uh, managers. What do you need to know and be able to do? We looked at the Society of American Archivists and what they suggest for the graduate programs in archival education. Uh, and so that takes care of the archival course work and the core competencies. And then we looked at the uh, certifying exams for uh, Records managers, the Institute of Certified Records Managers, ICRM, uh, has a six part exam uh, and uh, they have competencies that they believe professionals should master. Uh, so we reviewed that. We also reviewed the exam from the Academy of Certified Archivists. And you will see that, uh, and also I should mention uh, below that, we added later, so that wasn't at the beginning, uh, the uh, material for the information governance professional. Uh, so all three certifications are different, looking at records, looking at archives, and then looking at an overarching information governance program and uh, you will see the alphabet soup at the end of my name I have all three of those certifications the other people who uh, teach for us have at least one or two of those certifications as well uh, so the CRA CRM certification all of our Mars students when they graduate receive a letter from me saying that they are eligible to receive credit for parts one through five of the six part ICRM exam uh, just by graduating from the program. That means you've mastered the core competencies. The six part is a case study, that's different. So they won't give you credit for that. Uh, but the, uh, if you want to become a certified records analyst, uh, you usually only need parts two, three, and four for that. They will grant you that certification immediately. If you want to be a certified records manager, you have to sign up to take part six, that case a study part. And then once you pass that, you could become a certified records manager. You can even become the CRA first and then take as much time as you want to uh, move up through in order to be the CRM. They keep track of that, uh, uh, of the parts of the exams that they've given you credit for. So or you can take as long as you want to move through that. Uh, so we're really excited about this partnership. We've had a number of students take advantage of it. And if you're interested in the records management piece, this would be a good thing to be able to do very easily. Uh, the ACA, in order to become a certified archivist, it's just a hundred word, uh, I'm sorry, a hundred question in <laughs> that word, uh, exam. And uh, that exam they will not give you credit for. However, you do have to have certain coursework even to be eligible to sit for that exam. And they have pre-approved all of our MAR courses uh, that are required courses it, for this exam. So you would be able immediately to apply and they would just look and see you graduated from the MAR program and know that you're eligible as far as coursework to sit for that exam. We have a number of students who've uh, taken the exam and been successful. Uh, I remember last summer, one of our students posted on our Facebook page, I'm going to take this uh, CA exam. Uh, that was right after she graduated. And then a few weeks later, she posted, I passed. So uh, I, we're very confident that the information we provide about archives is also exactly what you need to uh, uh, be a certified archivist.
Uh, now, the core competencies, I've been mentioning competencies for the profession. Uh, what we did was come up with 10 competencies we believe all of our graduates need to know, uh, need to master when they graduate from our program. So they're listed here for you. I won't read through all of them, but here are things like uh, understanding the evolution of information record keeping systems in response to technological change. And we, we all, uh, I hope are keeping up with that and it's something as uh, you know uh, simple now as uh, electronic uh, records management but something more complex like uh, blockchain and artificial intelligence so uh, we look at all of the new technology and how it impacts the program and we make sure we cover that within the program and then you have assignments in class that support these competencies so that you have evidence that you have mastered them uh, the uh, courses for fall, this is new for fall. So if you had looked at our website before and maybe part of it is still being updated now, uh, you would have seen 33 required credits, but it's now 30, but you still have 42 credits you have to complete. 30 are required MARA courses. Those courses are listed for you here. Uh, that last course where uh, you see MARA 289, Advanced Topics in Archives and Records Administration, you do an e-portfolio instead of a thesis. We don't have a master's thesis option in MARA, so what you would do is complete an e-portfolio showing us how you've mastered those 10 core competencies I just showed you. And you do that by explaining what it means to you and then providing evidence that you have uh, uh, completed coursework uh, that supports each one of those competencies. And your evidence would be your assignments, your PowerPoint presentations, your discussions. Students begin saving those right in the very first class, just putting them in their own, uh, um, oh, either uh, their own online accounts or save them to the computer or whatever so that they're available there for when you're ready to graduate. So you can see here, these you must take all of these courses. But new for fall, what's new for fall is that you now have one extra elective. Before we had added on here, uh, the um, internship or organizational consulting project course. So one was an internship course, but if you wanted to uh, do something at your place of work and you had a supervisor that said, we have a project we'd like you to work on, that wasn't part of your regular uh, duties, then you could say, okay, I'll do that. That will be my organizational consulting project. So uh, those were the two options you had for that experience. Uh, but we've been allowing um, substitution. If, for example, your employer says, no, sorry, we have no job for you here at work and we don't want you working for someone else in an internship, we've been giving uh, students permission to take a fourth elective. Uh, and the number of requests that have been coming through now for permission to do that have been uh, so uh, uh, many that we've decided it would be just easier to allow the fourth elective. And if you want to do the internship or organizational consulting project, that can be your fourth elective. But if not, you can take another course either from the MLIS or from the MARA program. So uh, that's uh, why we're now new for fall down to 30 credits of specific courses that you have to take out of the 42. Now I mentioned at the bottom of that list of the courses you must complete is the portfolio. This is an example of one student's e portfolio. She did a terrific job and she's got it online for us. Uh, and if you're ever interested in seeing student portfolios, uh, you could look for the MAR program performance page. We have links to them there. Uh, but basically, this is what she put together. You see competencies A, B, C, they would go down through J. And then each one would explain the competency and then provide links to her homework uh, to show that she, she's mastered that. So this is the course rotation, and uh, you'll see the numbers are for those courses that I said you must take, the 30 
credits that are required courses, all MARA courses. So if you were starting in the fall, you'd start out if you wanted to take two. With MARA 200 and 204, there are basic courses. One is taught by Lisa that I mentioned, the other is taught by uh, Jason. You've also seen his picture. In the spring, uh, you would follow that up with two other courses, uh, MARA 210 by Jason and uh, uh, 283 by me. Uh, that one's um, hands-on with uh, SharePoint and also a digital repository, Preservica. Uh, but you can see the rest of the courses, the IA for 284 and the IG are the information assurance, information governance courses, very popular, also required. Uh, but where you see MLAS MARA, MLAS MARA, those are the electives. And uh, now, as I said, you would have four. and. Uh, if you take the internship or organizational consulting project, you uh, um, would be able to do that. The internship, people at ICRM look at that and would give you for a half year internship credit for one year of work in the field, uh, which you would also need to take that ICRM exam, right, uh, in order to become the CRM. So uh, consider that. I'll be your advisor. I'll be reminding you of these things as we go along. Uh, these are the electives, though. Uh, this is just a partial list. We have quite a few. Uh, it says updated in 2019 because we haven't identified new ones that uh, we feel should be listed here. These are all three credits. What we have been doing a lot lately, the MLIS and the MAR program, is adding uh, one and two credit courses, and those we don't even bother listing here. They're almost all pre-approved. You just ask me about them, and uh, I'll let you know if yes, that that makes sense for you to take. Uh, and those uh, move so quickly. We change those so quickly because they're on topics that are really new and interesting that uh, it, it, we'd spend all our time trying to redo the list. Uh, two examples. Uh, this summer, I'll be teaching a two-credit uh, blockchain for Archivist and Records Managers course. Uh, that'll be new. That'll be taught this summer. I don't know if it'll be repeated again, but it's something that uh, people have had an interest in. So I've developed it. It was approved. We'll be offering it this summer. Uh, in the fall, uh, uh, one of our graduates uh, is going to be offering a virtual reality course. Some of us have been interested in how would you move to virtual reality for education. And so uh, she's uh, devised a one credit a VR course. We'll offer that in the fall. We, again, don't know if it'll be offered again, but uh, it sounds like a fun option. And in the fall, we also have a two credit digital forensics course for archivists, which is fascinating. Uh, and uh, that one, we weren't sure it would be popular, but we're offering it now for the third uh, time, third fall, and uh, students really are enjoying it. So uh, we'll keep offering them until uh, they're no longer of interest and we have new ones that we want to put in. So uh, you can take any of these, a few others that we have listed, or any combination of one and two credit MARA or MLAS courses. So uh, there's something else that when you graduate from the MARA program, you not only have credit for those five parts of a six-part ICRM exam, but you also can elect to have an advanced certificate in strategic management of digital assets and services. That's a mouthful. But there are three pathways. You can only have one of these. And the one that makes most for us, you could have a certificate uh, that is in information governance, assurance, and security. And that's the one that makes sense because two of those courses are our MARA required courses, information governance and information assurance. And then what you would add is a cybersecurity three credit course from the MLS program. And you would be able to, once you graduate, request a certificate uh, for uh, those three courses. So uh, that's uh, kind of a popular option. Uh, this is the easiest, as I said. Uh, to get. These are the courses that would make up that uh, uh, pathway uh, for digital assets certificate. Uh, and there are other two others, as I mentioned, if you're interested in digital asset management, and a number of our students are now, uh, then uh, you could follow that or data analytics and data driven decision making. That's another popular area. And you can use those four 
uh, three credit courses, 12 units of elective credit in order to put together any electives in any area of interest that uh, we're not covering in our required courses. So, uh, courses for fall admits, I'll just quickly go over this. Dr. Lisa Dalby teaches this 220 course, uh, as all the others are, it's ACA pre-approved, uh, but it's also our writing course. And uh, it's a course in which you're introduced to uh, the APH style of writing uh, that's required for uh, all of the programs in the iSchool. Uh, and it's also the uh, course in which uh, you are offered a one-year paid membership in ACES, Nagara, or SAA. ARMA is not on the list because ARMA um, has not been able to reach a, a, uh, an agreement with us. Uh, they believe students should be taking taking nine credits in order to qualify for uh, student membership and we disagree because you're part-time students and for us we're really excited when you get through a three credit course a uh, six credits is all for one semester most first so for now uh, these are the three options that make the most sense uh, we're going to take two courses. Taking one, you take Lisa's. That's the foundation. But if you're taking two, you add Mara 204, Jason's course. Uh, and this one is really great management and leadership course. Everybody is really going to leave our program feeling that they can take over a program. It's not that you're going to go in and maybe you will at entry level. It all depends on, you know, what you apply for and what you accept, but you would feel very comfortable going in and being able to take over a program or being able to start a new program. So this management course is just fundamental to the program and you'll enjoy working with Jason. He's, he's fantastic. Um, and then as I mentioned, uh, Josh teaches a research methods course. If you wanted three courses, because you're going to try to get done in two years, that's the fastest I've seen anybody get done. But if you are, you would add his course because our MAR courses are only offered once a year, either fall or spring. We don't offer them twice a year because we have a small program. So if you're doubling up, you better double up on your MAR courses and not worry about those electives until you can fit them in wherever you feel comfortable with them. Electives are always uh, available in the summer as well. If you ever want to go to school in the summer, that's when I would suggest looking for those electives. So, uh, and you'll be surprised at how uh, relevant a research methods course is when Josh introduces it as something for records management and archival science. It's very practical. Uh, it's, it's not as theoretical as you would imagine. So this is a copy of my course. Uh, it shows what a course would look like. Uh, we use a, um, a learning management system, Canvas. In there, uh, we put together our modules, most of us by week. Uh, my week starts Monday morning and ends Sunday night. All student work for that week has to be in by 11, 50, 9 p.m. on uh, Sunday night. Uh, most of us follow that one week pattern, although somebody may start Sunday, somebody may start Tuesday. Sorry about that. You'll just have to make a very complicated calendar for yourself because that's the way we do it. Uh, but if you take a look at this, you will see that, uh, for example, where it says overview of enterprise content management, that's a lecture. All right, and I may have a link to a video in there or to a recording. And then the next one is enterprise content management to content service to this platform. That's something that's happening. So, oh my, what, what about this? Why is this happening? It's another lecture. And then we have a discussion about the features of both. Uh, and uh, then we get into a little lecture here on uh, SharePoint because this course is where I introduce you to Office 365 and SharePoint and we use a book for that. So there's readings on SharePoint and then uh, SharePoint features and then we actually have assignments within SharePoint where uh, you hop into SharePoint and you're going to have an account there. It's not your own. You don't download anything. You're working in the cloud and something that I am administrator for. You would create a site in there. You're going to learn how to declare records. You're going to learn how to do so much more. So, but that's what the uh, thing looks like. You've got discussions, you've got assignments, you've got uh, uh, lectures. And when there's an assignment and it says 10 points, 10 points, you do that somewhere else maybe, but you come back into Canvas always and either say I've got it done or upload a paper there if the assignment were a paper or whatever. 
whatever may it be. Uh, so everything is contained like this. And then we have one for every uh, module. Uh, so I have 15 modules like this for each semester. In the summer, I would have fewer. So this is where Kenna would have started. These are all the things Kenna is in charge of, uh, except for this. Uh, we have an iSchool Curriculum Center blog, uh, and this one you want to pay attention to. Uh, it has more generic information. The top one is by uh, Dr. Linda Main, who talks about the courses. That's where courses that maybe are dropped uh, for low enrollment are listed, are marked, uh, courses are never dropped, never worry about that, but electives maybe. Uh, and then uh, the student blog, we often have uh, uh, highlights about uh, students or graduates, whatever. This one here is a, uh, a tour that students took of a corporate archives. And so uh, Kabbalah, uh, who uh, has been uh, the um, uh, editor for that iSchool blog uh, wrote about that. She's also done some uh, work on our MAR program and uh, interviews with our students as well. This uh, is the iSchool MAR blog. Uh, this is the one Kenneth takes uh, control of. And uh, you'll see on the uh, side of your screen, the right side, uh, one uh, interview that Kenna had conducted was of a uh, MAR student who was appointed to, uh, appointed to the Archive Space Board. And so it was a little congratulatory kind of thing. Let's highlight him uh, on our blog. Down below is a picture of a number of us. We were at ARMA InfoCon in November. Uh, we are virtual, so we often don't meet in person, but if we ever have a conference and we're there, uh, I will invite you to breakfast, usually the second day of the conference, so we can do a quick meetup before sessions on that second day, so at least those of us who are there can get to meet each other, and uh, so that's always fun. Uh, and if you're just floating around somewhere and I happen to be in town for a conference, uh, let me know and we might be able to meet up that way too. One of our students, realized I was going to be in DC for a conference in uh, January. She was not attending, she was working at NARA, uh, but she sent me a note and said, I'll be in Union Station at five o'clock, <laughs> changing trains, you wanna meet? So I ran over and we actually uh, had dinner there together and then she hopped on a la later train to go home. So we try to uh, make uh, arrangements to meet up whenever we can. All right, and this is the close-up of that picture there, and uh, I'm hiding in the back uh, here, but uh, you'll see a number of us there. And uh, this was just a quick breakfast. Uh, these weren't all students. Dave Lowry is the uh, New York State Archives uh, uh, representative, and he's uh, president of a, a New York State Army chapter. And Ray over here uh, on the left, you'll see Ray Lynn Holiday's name. She's our contact for ICRM. So if whoever, anybody has questions, she gets answers immediately. All right, this, uh, it says upcoming webinar, but it's not, it has passed. Uh, Junia uh, is one of our graduates and uh, she graduated in 2017 and she's fantastic. She is now uh, the uh, director of uh, the Caption uh, Archives, which uh, she's responsible for a number of locations. I think it's something like four states. Uh, she spoke to us in February, and if anybody's interested in this type of archive, send me a note, and I will give you a link directly to the YouTube of her presentation. She did a super job. Uh, and then we always keep uh, webinars on demand, as I mentioned with Junia's presentation. Uh, Helen did a presentation for us last fall, and it was on implementing an ECM solution. So uh, some of them are about experiences in archives, others are about experiences in the records uh, management field, information governance field. Uh, this is something strange. Uh, I still like second life. Uh, and so uh, uh, 
a number of us get together once in a while to have some fun uh, activities. This was a smackdown where two uh, protagonists were antagonists, I guess, were uh, trying to explain why they prefer virtual reality over virtual worlds, and the other one was virtual worlds over virtual reality. And in between, when the referee was asking questions of the one, the other one would go off stage and become a huge giant. You could see on the right-hand side in the back and just try to distract the other one. Uh, it, it was so much fun that they were invited to present at another conference. And uh, we are seriously looking at virtual reality. We're meeting not only in our Second Life world uh, as our base, our hub, but we also meet in Kitely, which is kind of a intermediary uh, virtual world to virtual reality. And then uh, we are uh, researching right now uh, virtual worlds. Marie, who's going to teach that uh, virtual reality course in the fall, uh, is um, uh, working on this uh, actually for HP Labs, so she's got that uh, practical experience as well. And we all have our headsets now and our, you know, our gloves, <laughs> and we're trying to find the right kind of place to move into uh, if students want to uh, have that type of experience as well. So, uh, but that, those are fun meetings. So we don't require courses in that at all. You don't have to do that. All right. Salaries for Women IG. This is just uh, something that uh, I found. Uh, it was a 2020 um, a report, and uh, they're all over the board, as you would uh, expect, but the median looks fairly decent. Uh, and it all depends on the experience that you have, that you bring to uh, the position. Uh, and you will be very competitive uh, compared to people who graduate from other programs. It, it really will be. Uh, uh, I think you'll uh, be surprised at how uh, comfortable you are once you complete the program in being able to go in and uh, uh, sell your um, attributes. Uh, and after doing that e-portfolio, reflecting on everything you've done in the program, you're really pretty well set up to go out for any interview uh, or in-house to ask for a raise and you'll be able to explain everything you know and can bring to uh, the program or another position uh, when you're done based on uh, the reflection in that e-portfolio. So why Mara? Um, well, first of all, why SJSU? Uh, it's a fantastic university and uh, as some of you have pointed out, uh, the iSchool is amazing. Uh, we have such technology, such support for students and for faculty uh, that uh, if you have issues uh, that need to be resolved with technology, for example, we have a team that takes care of that. Uh, faculty feel very comfortable teaching because we receive support. We have to go through training just as you do. And if a person who wants to teach for us can't handle the training, they can't teach for us. And that has happened to a couple people that I know of that were really excited and wanted to teach, but they, they just didn't get the hang of uh, being able to put courses together and uh, be as committed and involved as you need to be when you teach online. Uh, but so students, uh, when they have an exit survey, usually say what they like best about the MAR program is faculty, uh, the program, the technology, but most of all the other students, they learn from one another. And uh, it won't matter if you have any background in records uh, management, archives, information governance, when you start, uh, you're going to find that you have something to bring to the table and those people who have experience, I am finding that they're just amazing and they're also adding to that experience and going beyond. So everybody seems to be able to move up a notch from where they are or many notches from where they are. It doesn't matter where you start. Uh, and we assume that you're uh, going to start without the experience, but really it's about 50-50. Uh, also from our uh, experts in the field and everybody who speaks for us does it through Zoom like this informal setting, offers their email, willing to and happy to uh, collaborate with you outside of uh, school if you're uh, interested in maybe belonging to an association or we just had two speakers talk about their podcast uh, and uh, they're, what they're doing is going around the world actually, and interviewing archivists so that they could explain all the different roles that archivists fill. Uh, and so uh, I have a few ideas for students who should be uh, interviewed as well. 
Uh, and then uh, the cost. The cost has not changed since I've started, since the program started in 2008. $474 a unit, so $19,908 for the entire master's program. Uh, the, um, there is a technology course. It's a one credit. Uh, it's not a one credit. It's the equivalent of one credit. It's a free course. It's self-paced, but I'm in there with you. So that's where you get to become comfortable with all the technology that you're going to use. You take that right before your first semester. Uh, when you um, register for classes, if you register for three credits, that's all you pay for. So you pay for 474 times three. If you register for six credits, you pay for the six credits. So you're not asked to pay for the entire program up front. You're not paying monthly for the program. What you're doing is saying, these are the number of courses that I'm going to take this semester. This is what my bill is going to be for the semester. If you take one course over the summer or whatever, then that's fine as well. Um, you can take, and I, I don't know that I mentioned that here, but you can take uh, one semester off without even requesting uh, permission to do that after you've completed a semester. So say you have your fall semester done and you find out that in the spring you've got a new responsibility at work, it's going to be a lot of work and you just can't handle it uh, and still do well in your classes. You may say, I'm going to take the semester off in order to become acclimated with my new job. And you don't need any waiver or anything for that. You just do that. And then what you do is when we start enrolling again for fall classes in the spring, you would just go ahead and register. Then uh, I'll help you. I'm your advisor. But if you need to take off two semesters after you complete one semester, if you need to take off two, uh, there is paperwork that you would need to complete for that. So you'd have to do some uh, uh, justifying, explaining why. So the application process, uh, you do need a 3.0 GPA a minimum. Uh, if you don't have one, you could take classes at another school and build up the last six credits uh, you've completed uh, on the bachelor's level uh, and beyond. And then once you get to the 3.0, you can apply. So once you apply now, they'll look for that 3.0 overall. If they don't see that, then they'll look at your last 60 units of credit. If that's a 3.0, you'll be accepted. If that's not, then what they'll do is uh, uh, say you're not uh, accepted, but you should know that you can go back to school and then uh, bring that average back up and then reapply. Uh, and then we have some application period for fall here. It's open now. Um, be sure to apply as, as soon as you can, uh, just uh, because it takes a while. Sometimes it even takes about six weeks or something. So you'll want to be able to make your plans. If you're a student who's still in a bachelor's degree and you're not going to graduate until May or June, uh, that's okay too. You can still apply. You will be accepted provisionally. And then uh, once you get that transcript available to you, you'll be able to submit it. Even if for some reason classes start in August and you're still waiting on that transcript, that's okay. Uh, they would allow you to take classes. It's just that you would be barred from registering again for the spring if that transcript never materialized. So that's, that's about it. So you can uh, apply online. Uh, and then we do have some scholarships for new students, but you've got to apply for those very quickly. Um, you can see down here uh, at the bottom on the right, uh, people who applied early uh, were able to start applying for a scholarship January 6th, but it's open until uh, May 1st. And this is just for $1,422. <laughs> which is good. It gets you a course, right? So um, that would be something that you want to be sure you try to apply for. We have uh, some scholarships, that, but most of them are after you complete a semester and demonstrate that you're doing uh, uh, acceptable work, then you're eligible to apply. And they're not for a lot, and, and they're not ongoing. So you can't uh, expect that um, you would be able to have your program paid for through scholarships from the school. You won't be able to. Most of our students uh, either have uh, uh, loans or they're self-funding. In some cases, their employer is funding their program. Uh, so for more information, you can visit the MARA website uh, and you could contact me 